Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Julie. I'm a level two chef. I'm Joe, and I'm a professional instructor at the Institute of Culinary Education, and I've been cooking for over 30 years. I have made potato salad one to two times in my life. This recipe is basically just a variation on my egg salad recipe because I actually make egg salad fairly regularly. We are going to make my mom's potato salad. She was a phenomenal cook. As a matter of fact, she was in the New York Times for her curry goat recipe. She was terrific. Today I'm going to make for you a potato and Brussels sprout salad with green apples, bacon, and dill. There's no mayonnaise. This one's served warm. The preparation is totally different. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel my potatoes. Well, I have here two rusted potatoes that I chose. This is because I saw it online as an option. I trust the internet. We've got some lovely red skin potatoes and we are not going to peel. I don't like a mushy potato salad, so the skin kind of helps hold the potato together when we're folding in the dressing. With the russet potato, I think it's important to peel. It's not good in a salad. Like it's just, it's like chewy and it's like solid. This is the ultimate potato for potato salad. I always use fingerling potatoes for this kind of presentation. They hold their shape better. They have better taste. They're denser. You'd be a fool to use another potato. Look at me, such a professional peeling potatoes. There's um, a lot of comments online that are like, these level ones must be actors. No one would be that dumb. Yeah. Joke's on you. Yes, they can be. <laughs> okay, all right, get, all right, get, nope, I'm gonna finish this. The first thing I do to cook these potatoes is I put them into cold water, making sure I only use the potatoes that are the same size, so they all cook evenly. Rather than cooking the potatoes whole, I prefer to slice them in quarters to get them to cook a little bit faster. And I'm done. Now I'm going to pop these potatoes into my cold water. In any cooking process, it's better to start in cold water and then bring it up to the boil so everything cooks at the same time. All right, I'm just going to bring this up. Oh, I love it when it serenades me. And then we're just gonna add, let's be really scientific here, a skosh of salt. salt the water. Salting doesn't increase the speed the water boils, it increases the temperature that the water boils at. I mean, you know, it's not brain surgery, but... Will probably take about 15 to 20 minutes. Add 212 degrees or 200 degrees. And then I'm gonna let it simmer at that simmering. So my potatoes have been cooking for about 15 minutes now, and I'm gonna test one to see if it's done. And I wanna be able to lift the potato out of the water. I don't want it to kind of slide off, because that means it's a little mushy. All right. Spread them on a little sheet pan. Just a colander, a bowl. I'll let the potatoes come to room temperature just like that. I've got to hustle and get these into the refrigerator to cool them down. Cool, 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 cool. All right, these are my potatoes. The next thing I'm going to do is get all the uh, stuff I'm going to mix them with. So, we've got our potatoes under control and cooling. Now it's time to boil up some eggs. I start the eggs in cold water. So the eggs cook very gradually. They don't become rubbery. Don't hate me, but I like well done eggs. So we're just gonna let these babies boil to 430 for like eight to 10 minutes. Now that my eggs have cooked for about 12 minutes, I'm gonna put them into ice water. And really what that does is make it easier for them to handle. You get a little water in between the shell and the egg. It makes it a lot easier to peel. And this peel you'll see comes off like a winter coat. Gee willikers. So I've been using this method. You take a glass, fill it about halfway with water. Then you drop it in, put the lid on, and then you do the shake, 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 shake. And it gets the process started for you. And voila, my friends. Or we can cut them the avocado way. We cut in and then we swirl the egg like it was an avocado and pop it open. Look at that, is that lovely? It is. Rather than quarters, I do sixths. I do sixths because I like saying that and also I love fractions. Okay, I've separated the yolks from the white because I'm going to garnish them separately on the finished dish. Here we have our eggs and we're gonna put them aside because we're gonna fold them into the salad. Now we're gonna move on to shallots and our other accoutrements. 
All right, so my potatoes are all set to go. Uh, the next thing I have to do is just chop up some things that I'm gonna be putting into the potato salad. I'm gonna move on to pickling the onions, which is a garnish for the top of the dish. I'll use white vinegar and water in equal parts and bring that up to a boil. I've taken some raw beet sticks and put them in this jar to make them a little earthy tasting and a little bit sweeter. I'm going to cut my onions it's relatively thin. Okay, I'll pack my jar pretty full. It's called a quick cure because the vinegar goes in hot and actually cooks the onions a little bit. You see how the vinegar is already getting very red from the beets? I'm going to leave these to come to room temperature then put them in the fridge for about a week and remember to invert them or shake them every day or so. So, shallots. They're my friend. I prefer using shallots to onion or scallion because it, I, I find it has a little bit more punch than regular onions. I want to do big dice. I like chunky potato salad. I don't like it very smooth or too creamy. It's time to move on to the apples. First, I'll need to peel them and cube them. To keep them green, I'll just put a little bit of lemon juice on them. I have scallions and I have parsley and I'm just going to chop them all up. I'm going to put them in a tiny bowl because we live luxuriously here at Epicurious. <laughs> this is a triple smoked piece of slab bacon. I'm going to cut these into lardons. It's kind of like a carrot stick cut, and I'm going to crisp in them up. It's important that I don't move the bacon, because if I move it, I keep exposing the cold side of the bacon to the pan, and they won't brown. Okay, this is about as cooked as I want my bacon. It's a little crispy, yet a little chewy, and I want to drain this bacon fat, because this is what I'm going to use to cook the Brussels sprouts in. Parsley's all chopped, scallions all chopped. Next thing I'm gonna do, my dill pickle, baby. I choose a dill pickle because all other pickles are garbage, fight me. I mean, I'm not saying that if you like those pickles, you're wrong, but you are wrong. You know what I mean? I'll prep my Brussels sprouts. I'm going to trim the outer leaves, toss them in a little bit of the bacon fat. Of course, I'm gonna season them with salt and pepper. And then these will go off into the oven to roast at about 450 for about 10 minutes or until they're nice and brown and not too soft. And now we're gonna make the dressing. The glue, if you will. We're gonna start with mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Good old accurate Julie is gonna tell you to use two globs. Then add a glob of Dijon mustard. Classic mustard. I'm like the Pokemon master, but I'm collecting condiments on this series. That gives it that little extra grown up potato salad. I feel like a, this is, what does this look like? Oh, like a bug. Now I'm gonna make a vinaigrette. I'll start off with about a tablespoon of a pomeray style mustard, which will bind the water, vinegar, and oil together. This is sweet paprika, and it gives just a nice, savory little hint. Pinch of sugar. I feel like this is maybe not how pinches are supposed to work, but. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of smoked paprika. Two very distinctive tastes. A whole bunch of pepper and dissolve that into my apple cider vinegar. I want to dilute it a little bit, so I add the water, and then I add grapeseed oil a little bit at a time. The last ingredient that we use is some sweet relish. I am making a mess here, aren't I? Well, that smells normal. So my dressing is done, and next we're gonna just start putting everything together. Okay, now for final assembly. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna squeeze my lemon juice. Instead of putting it in here, I like to put it directly on the potatoes. I have my cooked potatoes here. I need to cut them into fork-sized pieces. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump my scallions and my pickles into here. And I'm gonna do half my parsley now because I'm gonna do the other half on top after to make it look pretty because I'm an artist, goddammit. Dump in our eggs. Now, I'm not putting in all these shallots because remember I told you they're very flavorful and a little sharp. I'll Add in my Brussels sprouts. I'll add in a little bit of my bacon, apples. I put a tiny bit of dill. And then the next thing, I'm gonna take my dressing and I'm gonna put it on my potatoes. Da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna add a little bit more dill, a few more chives. I'm having a love affair with chives this month. And we're gonna begin to fold. Oh yeah, that's what potato salad looks like. There is nothing wrong with this. All right, I would describe that as combined. I kind of find balsamic to be maybe a little too strong for this. I prefer a little red wine vinegar. It takes the edge off the sweetness of the mayonnaise. Now that I have my potato salad mixed, it's time to plate and garnish it. I'm right over the plate I'm working on. I'm going to take a little dressing to go around the plate. I'm just going to garnish these. 
suckers. Parsley. Parsley. Bacon bits. It probably looks like I'm crying right now. <laughs> My eyes are really welling up with pride. A little more dill. Sweet pap. Ooh. Remember these pickled onions? They've been in the back of your fridge for a week. Scatter a few here and there. Then my egg whites and my egg yolks. And this is my potato salad. This is my potato salad. And there you go, my potato salad. All that's left to do is enjoy it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna like this no. one. I am pleasantly surprised. I like that it's spicy. If I got this at a picnic, I would be not angry. It's really good. That little hint of sweetness from the relish, the dill and the paprika take this over the top. Everything just works together. Kind of like this harmonious orchestra of flavors. And I also love the visual impact that all the different colors have. It's bubble and squeak with a tweak. I hope you guys make it and add this to your repertoire. Potato salad is a delicious side dish. Let's see how our three chefs made theirs the star of the show. When making potato salad, you want to use waxy potatoes, which are low in starch and high in moisture. Waxy potatoes have a firmer flesh and a thinner skin and hold their shape well when diced or cut into bite-sized pieces after cooking because the starchy cells stick together more than in the mealy types of potatoes. Emily used russets, which are a type of mealy potato that are oblong in shape with white flesh. Because they're a mealy variety, when cooked, the starch separates into fluffy dry particles. It's not good in a salad. Like it's just, it's like chewy and it's like solid. Emily minimized this flaking by pre-cutting her potatoes before she boiled them. She started her cooking by covering the diced potatoes with cold salted water. The cold water also helps to make Make cell walls more firm, which reduces the chance that her potatoes will become flaky. Sometimes cooked potatoes turn dark grayish due to pigments formed after chlorogenic acid, iron, and oxygen react together. You minimize this reaction by lowering pH, which is what Emily did when she added lemon juice directly to her potatoes after boiling. Julie used red and purple skinned new potatoes which are waxy potatoes. She boils them in their jackets or with the skins on. With a little bit of salt, just to aid in the boiling process. Could be an old, old wives tale, but works for me. This works well because these are young potatoes with thinner skins that have a colorful pigmentation. Joe used fingerling potatoes, which is also a waxy variety. Fingerlings are small and tender, high in water, and have a slightly sweet flesh. Instead of boiling, Joe poached his potatoes at 200 degrees in salted water. When poached, the potatoes don't move around in the water or bump into each other, which may damage the tender skin. Emily made a simple potato salad with parsley, scallion, and dill pickle for crunch in place of the more commonly used celery. There's nothing wrong with celery inherently, except that it's gross. I'm an adult, I pay taxes, I can eat what I want. I choose no celery. Julie adds boiled eggs, which adds some protein and richness. Egg yolks are high in fat and pigments, such as lutein and zeaxanthin, both of which are xanthophils, which are yellow pigments that occur widely in nature and add a yellow color to her potato salad. She uses rough chopped herbs, including chives, dill, and parsley. The finer the herbs are cut, the more flavor extraction. I wanna do big dice. As far as I'm concerned, there's no real wrong way to do anything except making steak well done. Don't do it. Joe gives a fall harvest bean to his potato salad by adding trimmed Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are members of the cabbage family and have a distinctive bitter flavor from the combination of sulfur and nitrogen that they contain as isothiocyanates, a chemical group formed by substituting oxygen with sulfur. Slight browning adds a crunchy texture, but be careful. Over roasting Brussels sprouts will cause the sulfur compounds to form trisulfides, which give overcooked cabbage that unappealing, distinctive flavor. Joe mixes the salty, crispy bacon with hard boiled eggs to bring a balance of salty, bitter, and sweetness. It's potatoes, bacon, and eggs. Joe also made pickled red onions, which he did by combining sliced red onions and a red beet and covered it with heated vinegar, water, and salt. 
By heating this mixture first, it ensures that the salt is dissolved and flavors are well combined. Emily combines viscosity from the mayonnaise and color and tartness from the mustard. Mayonnaise is an emulsion of egg yolks, oil, and acid like vinegar, and mustard is a natural emulsifier because it contains mucilaginous compounds in the outer coating of the seed. Both of these ingredients help to keep her dressing from breaking. Julie made a tighter dressing, which is thick and adheres to her potatoes very well. She also adds pickled relish, which is based on India relish and is made from cucumbers, vinegar, spices, peppers, and sometimes turmeric. Unlike Emily and Julie, Joe doesn't use mayonnaise as the base for his dressing. Joe instead uses a vinaigrette that's a small amount of mustard, cider vinegar, water, and canola oil. Cider vinegar comes from apples and is higher in malic acid and darker in color than white vinegar. Emily mixed her potatoes with everything, carefully keeping the potatoes shape while covering them with her tasty and zesty dressing. Julie trimmed her potatoes before assembling to make them bite-sized. This is actually kind of almost a melding of German potato salad and American potato salad. She also mixed her potatoes gently so that they didn't break up too much. Joe combined all of his ingredients with half of his vinaigrette and then garnished his plate with grated egg whites. And you notice I'm adding every Everything, like the numbers on a clock around the main ingredient and that's so I can gauge how many potatoes there are to the other ingredients. When it comes to potato salad, there's no shortage of varieties, methods, and preferences. We hope you can take a bit of creative license from our chefs the next time you want to put your stamp on this culinary classic.